You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com Listening to Earth Oddity, a weekly odyssey into all the oddity planet Earth has to offer. And now, serving it up are Christopher Tiny Sullivan and John Long. Welcome, everybody, uh, to another episode of Earth Oddity, your weekly respite from the normal news in the world <laughs> and the fake news in the world. But the, you get the real unfiltered news that's going on in the world right here, um, directly in your ears from myself and my co-host, Mr. Tiny Sullivan. How you doing today? I'm doing fine. Everybody doing all right? Oh, yeah. We're doing great. It's a big day for my family today. Um, you know, uh, it's the first day I've worn jeans this year that I remember. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Man. So that's always a big moment, you know. Like... uh Oh, man, who sang that song? Conway Twitty, you know, Lordy Mama, Baby's Got Her Blue Jeans On. That's what it's like when I get them on around the house, you know. Yeah. Stuff gets turned up. So, But Uh-oh. no, it was a big day. Libby got baptized today. Which Congratulations. Is yes, thank you very much. It was a... It was a wonderful day for us. We attempted to sing a song at church too, which they did sing yeah. a song. The we Dragon did. Family sang it for the church this morning. Minus Thomas, who's too cool to get up on stage. <laughs> and adding Hudson. So originally it was just gonna be me, Deidre, mm-hmm. and Libby, and then right before it's time to go on, Hudson's like, I wanna sing too. So we're like, Come on up here, buddy, <laughs> even though you haven't practiced with us, but yeah. They went pretty well. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't as good on the guitar as I wanted to be, but oh, I, whatever. I tried, you know, my fingers and brain quit kind of working there together at one point. I'm going to, I'm going to message your mom because I feel like this was just too, too much talent to keep from our audience. <laughs> this, this is going to have to find its way into the show at some point. <laughs> no, no, no. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear that. Like, I think they all would like to hear that. <laughs> like on the guitar, I only really know like a few select country songs, you know, like uh, Waylon Jennings songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a Cat, lot, sca- a can, lot, a can, lot. Of great, scratch fever. I don't know any nudes. <laughs> I know a lot. Of, I like um, the wealth of my knowledge is Grateful Dead, right? Um, and you really can't sing Grateful Dead or Waylon Jennings songs in church, <laughs> at least in a Southern Baptist church. So Waylon would go over probably better than the Dead, though. You yeah, know, I can probably. get up there and sing Lonesome Ordinary of Mean, and people would probably clap for that. But anyway, it's a big day for our family. Yeah. We got a big podcast. Uh, got a few different stories. Got a uh, Got a guy defending his lover's honor here that I'm going to lead off with. What about you? I have uh, cops getting punched in the face at SantaCon. Okay. I've got a teacher that was uh, biting his student. Mm, Might save that one for the end. That'll happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. Well, uh, You want to kick it off? Yeah, I'll kick it off. Let's just get right here in front, into it. Now, I'm going to read this story, and then we're, we're going to guess at the end you and our listening audience are going to guess where, what state it's from. Okay. Okay. Um, Florida. <laughs> Sorry. No, just wait. Wait for the just end. Just wait. Don't ruin it. Okay. <laughs> uh, police say it started with a fight over Hot Wheels and ended with a man shot in the leg. According to a report from WKYT, Jason Green is charged with assault and wanton endangerment. Um, this shooting happened at a mobile home park. Uh, Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Police say G- Green went into the woman's home and accused her of stealing toy cars from his girlfriend. The woman argued that the girlfriend gave her the Hot Wheels, <laughs> and the woman says <laughs> Green slapped her, so her fiancé jumped in and Green shot him in the leg. Wait, these are... Uh- these are grown people. Yeah, these are adults. Right? Yeah, these are adults. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Green's currently being held in jail. Um, and I don't want to say where because it's going to ruin the thing. <laughs> so what happened is his girlfriend accused the other girl of stealing Hot Wheels from him. So he goes over to get her Hot Wheels back. He's got to defend your woman, you know. Right. Uh, goes in. The woman's like, no, nah, I got these fair and square. Uh, 
the guy then proceeds to slap the other woman because you just don't go taking Hot Wheels from <laughs> from my girl, you yes. know. And then her man gets involved and he gets shot in the leg, and now Mr. Green's in jail. So, given all of that information. Where would you think it would, this is taking place at? Two states come to mind. Okay. And uh, I only get one guess. Yeah. So I'm yeah, going to get one guess. <laughs> you got to make it count. You get, it's like an Eminem song. Rap I'm going to guess shot. Alabama. Mm, no. Dun, good, dun, 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 dun. good guess, though. That's right. This was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Really? Yeah. Because my right. second guess would have been Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like Florida would be everybody's go to. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's Bowling Green, Kentucky. Not, I mean, not that Kentucky's a place where you wouldn't expect this to happen. Right. You know, Kentucky's pretty much like Alabama. It is. You know, we got our, <laughs> the Alabama of the North. Yeah. Yeah. Of the North South. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. Because they're like the northern part of the South. That's true. But, uh, yeah, but they are in the north. I will say that. I went to – one time when I was a kid, I was in Nashville on vacation, and we wanted to go ice skating. And so I went to the front desk and said, hey, is there an ice skating ring around here? And the lady – or rink. I call them rings, by the way, just so everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. And the lady, like, laughed at me, and she was like, oh, child, you're in the south now. And I'm like, I'm from <laughs> Alabama. This is the north. You know <laughs> And she did not think my geography joke was Poor funny. Kentucky. They're too yeah. southern for the north to accept them, yeah. and they're too northern for the south right. to accept exactly. them. Exactly, yes. <laughs> they're just caught in the middle. <laughs> they are. Also, it was called Skyline Mobile Home Park, so it's okay. probably a pretty classy place. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, but anyways, he he had to go over and defend his woman's honor, and that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. You know, I remember I had a friend, and I can't remember his name, but... We worked at Walmart at the time. This was decades ago. I didn't ago. even know you worked at Walmart. Dude, I've worked at Walmart at two separate times in my life. Wow. Okay. Right out of high school and then one time in my early 20s. Okay. So, <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Well, anyway, my buddy, he would, every single day we were going to break and he would stop at the toys and he would go through every single Hot Wheel on the rack. Oh, wow. And we were like, man, you're really into Hot Wheels, huh? And he said that if you find a Hot Wheels car and it's got this little bitty treasure box in like the lower left hand, you know, of the packaging, then yeah. it's like, you know, worth 10 bucks or something oh, like wow. that. I didn't know that. And so, of course, now I don't know who's going to buy them. True. There's got to be a Hot Wheel market out there. This I dude's willing so. to slap a woman over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe these were just not your ordinary yeah. Hot Wheels You're that you get in your ones. Christmas stocking. These yeah. were like, you know, $10 yeah. Hot Wheels, people, which is a lot of money. People collect weird stuff, though. Yeah. You know, one time... All right, this is, I was in college, and some friends came by and picked me up and like, hey, we're going to this party, and this was in the winter, and mm-hmm. um, uh, this is going to be, sorry, Mom. So on the way <laughs> over there, the the guy, one of the guys, who I didn't really know that well, was like, hey, if you cut the heater on, I'll buy you whatever drug you want when we get to the party. So I was like, all right, I'm, I was going to cut like the a, heater on anyway. Sounds like a deal. But I'm saving eight bucks, okay? <laughs> So I may have eaten a bunch of mushrooms at this party or whatever. And then somehow we ride with someone else out to this guy's house. And, uh, and so I'm not like in a, in a normal frame of mind. And this guy proceeds to give me a 30 minute lecture on why his sports illustrated collection that he has was going to make him all these millions of dollars one day. (laughs) And I listened to all of it. And then I was like, do you think their value is going to be that high when Sports Illustrated prints probably a million copies every right. every issue? You know, like, exactly I feel rare. like it's being diluted. You know, and it, it was like I crushed all his hopes and dreams. <laughs> like right there, sitting at a kitchen trailer and a or kitchen table in a trailer out in like Coker, Alabama, somewhere. <laughs> and I was just like, oh well, sorry, but I didn't, I didn't mean to. To do it. It was a very weird night, though. I was with, like, a lot of random different people I didn't know. There was a dog that kept peeing inside, like, and everyone acted like that was a normal thing. (laughs) It was just a very weird night, but yeah. He he collected Sports Illustrated. Maybe one day his ship's coming. Maybe he's laughing at me right now listening to this. That would be awesome. You know? Like, no, I sold that 1996 Brett Favre cover one, you know? That was one he was really excited about, too. Do you remember the guy's name? Don't remember his name. They're like, what business are you in, sir? He's like, periodical business. <laughs> That's right. But he also had like a bunch of like little ceramic Rottweilers, like uh, statues of That's Rottweilers. That's oddly specific. Oh, yeah. I'm, I've, I have vivid <laughs> memories of this night. You have no idea the things that, that like, 
happened that I was not even connected to that I, I just somehow found myself right. in the situation through a series of bad choices. I would just like to add <laughs> kids who are listening to this. Don't follow my example, but he had like, because Rick, do you want to be in the trailer in Coker, Alabama right. with the dog peeing inside? Yeah, with the dog peeing inside. Does that really sound with that a guy fun? talking to you about his sports illustrated collection and showing you his collection of Rottweiler figurines, <laughs> which he has names for like, Oh, this is pepper right here. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's <laughs> this one's Scoodles over here, uh, and you're like, and there's like you know Hank Williams Jr. playing, I mean, like blaring over the stereo. And at some point, this guy I hadn't seen since high school, like comes walking in, and I'm like, somehow we ended up together. And then at some point, they were like, "We're I, this is so weird. You probably need to cut all this out." But at some point during the night, they were like, "We're gonna go outside and call Cheetah," and I was like, "What? You know?" I'm like, "I'm cool inside. I don't know what that is." Chester Cheetah. They're going out, and they're like sitting on the you know how people have big propane tanks i yes. don't know if those exist outside of the south you know but he had like yeah, if, a, you, if your house is heated is heated with natural gas right and you don't want to you know fill your yard full of propane tanks so you get one huge propane yes, tank right. it's very normal here in the south right no, very normal yeah but they're like riding it like a buffalo like doing all these like <laughs> calls. you know like in the middle of the woods you know <laughs> That's very bizarre. Very bizarre. Well, I remember I used to I used to climb on our propane tank when I was young myself. Yeah, right. I did too. It I was, was a missile. Yeah. Oh well ours was a horse. Okay. It was at my uncle's, but yeah, it was a horse. But uh but yeah, you know, like but when you're twenty two and doing that, you're just like this, <laughs> this is bizarre, you know? Yeah. Um, there's like <laughs> maybe two people that I listened to this who were there that night. And I just want both of you to know that I've never forgotten that night. <laughs> like that was such a bizarre whole turn of events. But I like to imagine young John thinking to himself, you know what? I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> like this is like, this is like during my like hippie phase. Yeah. You know? So I'm like tie dyed shirt, baggy <laughs> Jinko pants or whatever. And then I'm out there with like, you know, a dude with like cut off sleeves with a Bo Cephas t shirt and like a David <laughs> Allen co hat. And it was just like a, a meeting of worlds that uh, wow. I was not prepared for that night. I don't know how I got off on that. <laughs> Other than if that dude, if someone had stolen that dude's Sorts Illustrated collection, he probably would have shot someone. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, people collect weird things. They do. Yeah. Anyways, another tale from my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why people listen. I guess so. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Our next story. Escape plot to blast a hole in North Carolina jail falls apart when plans were mailed to the wrong person. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you telling me that criminals don't always make the best moves or the smartest moves? Yeah, sometimes they, oh, wow. they don't. That's crazy. An escape plot to blast a hole in the Almonds County Detention Center in North Carolina was thwarted when an inmate mailed the plans to the wrong person. KTLA sister station WGHP reports. A woman received a letter from the Almance County Jail on December 6th, according to the sheriff's office. Thinking it was a letter to her, she opened it. Sure. I would do the same thing, probably. Yeah, as long as I had your name on it. It's well, federal <laughs> offense to open somebody else's mail. Yeah. I like to tell that to my wife all the time. She still opens my mail, though. Oh, yeah. Makes me a little mad. <laughs> you got to get a P.O. box. Yeah, I had one at one time. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> inside, get this, she found a detailed drawing of the Allmans County Detention Center, instructions for making a bomb, and a plan for explosives to be planted on the south side of the detention center to create an escape route. That's when she alerted law enforcement. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah appreciate that, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Sean Damien Castoria, 43, of Graham, was already in the detention center serving time on a first-degree murder charge, Ooh. and now he faces new charges for <laughs> well, trying I guess to if escape. You're, if you're in for that, you're just like, I'm not getting out for a while. Might as well give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. Let me scroll back up because yeah. my computer what, cut off for some reason. What Here are you going to do, like tack on an extra life sentence? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess when you kind of get to that point, you're like, well, what what is there to lose? Mm -hmm. He allegedly conspired with Shannon Douglas Gherkin, 23, of Graham, and Dakota Lee Marquette, 24, of Burlington. Got to watch out for Dakotas. <laughs> yes. Know, those dudes are always trouble. <laughs> According to arrest warrants, the sheriff's office reports that Gherkin and Marquette may have been followers of Castori Castoria. Followers? Yeah, followers. Oh. So. He's... If the bomb had gone off according to the plans, it would have injured, injured other inmates and some of the administration. Detectives found additional evidence of the plot in Castoria's cell 
and conversations recorded on phones at the detention center. Dude, yeah. if you're in jail, got to know that. Do you not know right. they are recording literally yeah. every single thing you do? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've only been in jail briefly, <laughs> yes. you know, and I even know that. So, I mean, you can't even poop in solitude. No. So, no. very awkward. Why in the world are you going to be? I mean, I guess maybe if you got code words, yeah. you think you're smart enough right. to slip it by them. Yeah. But maybe so, but still. Anyway. Yeah. You know, they may not have even needed this. They read your mail, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah so right. they may not even needed this lady to right. turn it in. They may have known about it to begin with. Who knows? Well, I wouldn't, you know, our government, they, they let us down a lot, you know, <laughs> right. so they may have just somebody's asleep at the wheel over at the jail. Which supposed a, to be checking on all this Which stuff. a lot of prisons are private now, aren't they? That's true. That's so very true. private for private prisons. A lot of people prisons. have problems with that, by the way. And, I mean, that's not entirely without merit. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I kind of see, I kind of see both sides of the true. argument. On the one side, hey, the private sector can do this way more efficient and right. way better than the government could ever hope to. Right. But then at the same time, like, people they, can say, hey, they need customers. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> they gotta have. They gotta have customers. And judges, they have to. Yes. They have to hand out sentences that's to keep right. these people happy. Yes. So. So uh, yeah, but it, that's we a cannot, whole. Yeah. We cannot fix that here no, on the Earth no, Podcast. No, 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 There's no. a lot of yeah, that's things a, to that's consider. That's a very, very big topic with a lot of fingers going in. That a lot is of above our pay grade, right? which yeah. is zero. By we, the way, we just we just talk about funny news stories, <laughs> yes. and then I tell some embarrassing stuff about my personal life. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was charged with an attempt to escape the county jail, two counts of manufacturing slash assembling a weapon of mass destruction, Ooh, and four mass destruction. Mass destruction. Wow. And four counts of felony conspiracy. Gherkin and Marquette were both charged with malicious use of explosive to damage property. Uh, this is not his first attempt to escape, according to the sheriff's office. He once tried to escape from an annex earlier in 2018, which is this year. So yeah, earlier right. this year, he tried. He's saying he's not to be now. determined. <laughs> That's what you got to appreciate his stick to yes. What he's got to do, though, is, uh, you know, he needs to get a rock hammer um, and a fair faucet poster. <laughs> yes. and just slowly over the years, work his way out. I mean, he's got to crawl through a couple miles of sewage line. Yeah. And then he's polishing a boat down on the beach somewhere yeah. when his buddy comes and sees him. You know, we talked about that in an earlier episode. Yeah. And I didn't get a chance to say it then, but I want to say it now. Like, a beach without any women is it's like having... I don't know, man. <laughs> it's not worth it to me. I don't know. I don't know. A beach with no women is no beach at all. I don't know. It's a hot desert. I mean... In a way, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love women. I love my wife. She doesn't listen to the show anymore, by the way, of course. But uh, there's a certain solitude that comes with, you know, like I was saying, if there's women at the beach, you're going to end up having to do stuff you don't want to do. All right. That's all I want to say. Like, you got to, you know, that's a good point. Instead of working on your boat every day, sanding it and painting it or whatever, now you got to, like, you know, help. You got to rake the beach. Yeah. Right. Clean up all the rocks Wash and the coconuts shells. out that you've been eating out of and everything. I'm just saying. There's a downside to it. Now, the upside is really, there's really a lot of pluses on the upside, you know, in the pro column. But in the con, let's not act like there's no cons. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. And I would feel like women would probably feel the same way, too. You know, like right. at some point, they'd just be like, hey, you know, it might just be better not to hassle with guys. You know, they're always mm-hmm. doing stupid stuff anyways. So. Yeah, but how are they going to open their pickles? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why the patriarchy is dominating. Yeah. You're not sensitive. Enjoy your pickle and sandwiches, women. <laughs> Who's going to kill all the spiders? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Not take out the trash. <laughs> I feel like that's every man's job, by the way, is just take out the trash around yeah, the house. That's true. I don't know why, you know? like Because I'm, it's gross. That's why. Is it? Yeah. I mean, it's like all contained in a bag. It's not like you got to reach in there and... Get something out or anything. Yeah, but I mean, think about how great life would be if you didn't have to do it. You know? Well, it would, I mean, it wouldn't be like a massive difference, but it would be to the plus. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. Yeah. Like, strangely enough, like at my family, we just, everyone just piles up the trash, Mm -hmm. you know, as high as it can go. And then my wife gets frustrated and is like, we need to take the trash out. I have to get up and go take it out. So it would be better to not have to do that. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm trying to train her to do it. You know? <laughs> and she won't get on board with it. She's well, stubborn. Well, if Deidre <laughs> learns how to take out the trash, she's not going to need you anymore, John. <laughs> well, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a real good point. 
Yeah, because I am the only one that knows the pathway from the trash can to the big trash can outside. You know, like no that, one else can find it but me. That and the cojones to take it on and do it. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, I'm just saying like, I don't know why she can't take a trash out. She's already washing clothes, doing dishes, cleaning house, taking care of the kids. Just take the trash out too, woman. I'm trying to watch the football game, okay? I'm saying it's not like you got a lot on your plate, okay? Just... Let's just do that. And cooking. Let's get in there and cook, too, you know? Yeah. I'm saying whatever. Okay. You, because your team needs you. Yeah. She doesn't listen anymore. That's why I can say all that, you know? That's how I'll know when she started listening again. <laughs> You're just going we'll to slip have these a, in. About to have a conversation about all this stuff. All right. Well, uh, let's move along. Uh, we have a story here um, that's near and dear to my heart. Um, no pun intended. Uh because, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. someone I love very dearly one day could possibly might need to have a heart transplant. Although that's really not a possibility because his is all like jacked up. Mm-hmm. It, it, mine and yours won't hook up like it's supposed to. They have to do some mods on it. But anyways, um, this comes from Fox News. A human heart was left on board a Southwest flight and it prompted an in-flight turnaround. Uh, so they say... Uh, Officials realized that a human heart had been left on board, and passengers were shocked when the captain explained that the heart was intended for delivery to a Seattle hospital after a previous flight from Sacramento, uh, Sacramento, the Seattle Times reported. A Southwest spokesman said it was absolutely necessary to get the cargo back as quickly as possible. Dang. Yeah, first of all, I didn't know they flew like organs on just your regular commercial flights, you know? Well, I mean, well, think about it. You got to get it there ASAP. That's why you wouldn't fly commercial, right? <laughs> well, well I, okay, now, look, anyone out there listening to this who actually knows, yeah, right. please <laughs> write in Neither explain it because <laughs> I'm just taking my best shot. <laughs> okay. But it just seems to make more sense to me that if you need this heart to get here, like as soon as you can, like the fastest way would just to be charter a plane and right. fly it right there on the spot. Yeah. Or like a, a helicopter or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. I'm thinking that that's probably too expensive, especially when you think of how many organs are getting passed around. Yeah, so totally maybe true. it's easier just to, hey, there's a flight that leaves at such and such time. You call up the airport. Yeah. And we got an organ for you. Yeah, and hey, you just rush it over We need there. a seat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a little, you like get on your board your flight and there's like an igloo. Cooler in the in the next seat. Well, next you could seat. probably just set it on that little cart that they bring the drinks around on. <laughs> probably you know? true. You probably don't like have to somebody pay for it. scooping ice out of it, and filling their drink up with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that reminds me of a great story. I'll tell you later. But. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, it goes on to say nothing is more important. This is a spokesperson from Southwest, which I mean, when when you're like the PR guy for Southwest and they call you and like, hey. uh Hey, Tiny, we got an issue here. We Mm -hmm. were transporting to Oregon, and we forgot to unload it, and we had to turn the plane around. (laughs) There's going to be some news stories we need you to put out a statement. you got to be like, oh, man, like how do I make this sound the best as possible? But anyways, this is what he came up with. Nothing is more important to us than the safety of our customers and the safe delivery of a precious cargo we transport every day. Um, So concerned passengers use their cell phones to learn that the human heart had only hours to remain viable for a transplant, which got, I mean, if you're the pilot and you got like some dude in <laughs> business class back here Googling it, or of course Southwest, I guess is all just like, we're all just on there like a herd of cattle, right. you know, Googling like, oh, uh, and like hollering up front, like, you need to hurry up, man. We only got 45 <laughs> minutes left. I like to imagine the plane coming down on the runway, but they don't slow down instead of <laughs> the, the little, uh, the stairs on the little go kart that they have, like, is racing up beside right. it. And they're just handing it in through the window. So, do with a lab jacket on, like, reaching out to get yeah. the hand off. Yeah. Uh, said so the heart had traveled from California to Washington State, across Idaho, and back to Washington, according to the Seattle Times. The Southwest flight spent about three hours in the air before landing back at the SeaTac Airport. Dr. Andrew Gottschalk was traveling on the flight and told the paper that while everyone aboard was happy to save a life, he still thought the incident was a horrific story of gross negligence. Got to agree with that. Yeah. Got to agree with that. And I guarantee you, everyone on board was not happy with that. There's some dude that had a meeting that was just like, I can imagine that guy's like, 
I'm so sorry, y'all. I'd forget my head if it wasn't screwed <laughs> <Right>. on. <laughs> uh, like there's some dude that's got like a big sales meeting. He's like about to close like a sale that's going to make his commission for the entire year yeah. or whatever. And that flight starts turning around and the, the like guy's like, ding, you know, guys, excuse me, uh, pastors, we have to divert the flight. We have a vital organ we need to take. And he's just like, <laughs> let the person die. You know, like, <laughs> I need to get to this meeting. You know, he's like, yeah. I do not care about some stranger. I need, my family needs to eat. I promised my kids a new swimming pool <laughs> this year. So. Uh, yeah, swimming pool, dude's life. Right. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, you know how people are. <laughs> I know how people are. If it was me, I would that's be like, true. dude, let me help you fly. What can I do? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. how can I assist in this in any way? I'll I don't go get care. some ice. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Southwest didn't provide the name of the company that shipped the human heart, but it confirmed that it specialized in shipments that are life critical. Uh, but no Seattle area hospitals claim to be involved, according to the paper. Kind of weird. Yeah. Kind of weird. But maybe they were just like, maybe it got like the wrong label put on it or something. And I don't want to get involved to get sued or something. Maybe. Um, after it was unloaded, the passengers were told to deplane, excuse me, to deplane as the aircraft had suffered an unrelated mechanical issue. Uh, they're probably just looking for other, like, hey, make sure y'all got those <laughs> kidneys off too. Nobody knows about those yet. Get them off too. Um, and they once again departed for Dallas following a five hour delay. Man. So, like I said, there was one dude, I guarantee you, that was not happy that someone's getting a new heart. Just playing the odds and knowing how horrible people are. Well, we here hope that that person got their heart and yeah, they're doing yeah. well. Absolutely. Yeah. I do. Most definitely. Uh, all right, because, quick story. I'm yeah, going to try to make it, it quick. Um, one time, my mother and her husband, my stepdad at the time, were on their way to Tuscaloosa from Fayette going down 171. Mm-hmm. And they get behind a ambulance that's, you know, just traveling down 171. We're, we, I assume they're going to Big DCH. Yeah. But they went around a curve, and one of the doors, like on the back, actually came open. <laughs> and a cooler... Came tumbling out and like went over into the into the, the ditch. ditch, but they kept going. And my mother, being the the redneck she is, she's like, "We should go back and get that cooler. That's pretty cooler, baby. That's probably a nice cooler." That's right. So they turned around, went back and got it, and they opened it up. And you know what was in that cooler? What a toe, somebody's toe. Oh no! Yep. Wow. And what they do? They called a tow truck. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful 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 so is that a real story no. or was it a joke <laughs> it's all fun. dang I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. i know some people that are paramedics in bed <laughs> and i was like i could see them you know just being like nah. getting there going what happened to that toe you know <laughs> imagine the dude like all right we're going to show you some nice prosthetics <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> sorry we have regret to inform you we're not going to be able to attach we can't toe. save your toe yeah, yeah sorry it's been, it was horrible It'd we did tall. everything we could <laughs> <laughs> What's weird? I mean, like I was totally, I was in. I believed it. You know, <laughs> I was like you got me. I'm gonna tell uh, that to my kids. By the way, <laughs> this is awesome. That's a good joke. Okay, we our next story here. Headline: Britain's most stupid thieves must have thought escape room was a real bank. Oh wow! Have you ever done an escape room? I haven't. I haven't. I've I've had friends. I think all the kids have done it before, mm-hmm. but not me. Yeah. Eli, he wanted to. You can't cage this. I'm a wild stallion. (laughs) You can't cage me. (laughs) Eli, he wanted to do one when we were in uh, Gulf Shores. And of course, Tara was having none of it because it's fun and she doesn't like things that are fun. (laughs) But we did one and he. But you want to bring her on the beach with you. Okay, I understand. (laughs) That's fine. I see where you're going with it. Oh, well played, sir. All right. A pair has been branded the stupidest burglars after they broke into an escape room thinking it was a real bank. They got into Lucardo escape rooms in the early hours of yesterday, smashing through three doors before stealing cash and causing extensive damage. Director Ian Pownow said they were opening every drawer in there looking for cash. They couldn't get through the lock, so they had a drill. They were unscrewing panels off their hinges. 
uh, as if they thought it was a real bank, but obviously there was only more clues inside, like just more puzzles. <laughs> Maybe they hadn't been in an escape room before or didn't know what it was, but they looked completely bemused. <laughs> There's certainly an irony to it. Escape rooms involve participants using their wits to solve a series of puzzles to get a code out of a themed room. Every, I mean, I would assume most everybody has seen them. They've kind of cropped up in the last you know couple of years. Right. And they're yes. everywhere. I think basically the... Uh, like either a Tomb Raider or a Resident Evil puzzle in a video game. Yeah. That's basically what right. it is. You get locked in a room and you have to yes. use these clues to figure out and find uh, keys. Yeah, you got to find a key and then you t- that key unlocks this. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're out. Yes. But it's just funny because uh, these guys, they... Uh, they, they thought they were actually going <laughs> to... They broke into a jail. <laughs> no, it's a bank-themed escape room. Wow. And they just they did over 2,000 pounds in damage looking for cash, and all they kept finding was more clues <laughs> and riddles. That's so, <laughs> that's so funny. I wonder if at any point it dawned on them, like, hey, man, we are in the wrong place. You know, like, this is know. not the bank, guys. <laughs> I mean, how do you even think that? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, it's not even a big business. It's a family-owned business. Who knows? I mean, people are, you know, yeah. I don't. I don't know if it's big in in England, but I could see meth heads doing like that, <laughs> doing something like that here, yeah. you know, in the south. So <laughs> right. I don't know if they got meth in England like we do here. So, but we do here. We do. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. And I'm we. I can. I can. Yeah, you see can see them doing that. By the way, I was like, I saw what I think was a suspected meth head, like having an argument with himself last night outside of a gas station in Mississippi. (laughs) Who was winning? I don't know. Like, (laughs) I was like, it rounded the corner as I was coming out of the gas station to get in the car, and it was like hollering. So my first thought was he's hollering at me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I like paused because I didn't know if it's like an emergency or whatever, and, you know, kind of make eye contact, and it just kept hollering, but it was like unintelligible and so i just went and got in the car and while well, i was you know taking my jacket off and stuff because i was about to drive an hour mm-hmm. um it continued or he continued to holler at himself and wow i was just like that was pretty neat i should probably video this and put it on facebook <laughs> and i was like nah there's no reason to like to make fun of the dude when i have a podcast i can do it all so right. you know, i was like i'll just talk about it tomorrow but yeah he was just hollering at himself and then people like didn't weren't even concerned. Hmm. I wasn't real concerned, you know. It's just yeah, like yeah. not every day you see a dude just hollering. Just at himself and at the window. He hollered at the window of the gas station for a little while. Just like no one in there, you know. <laughs> just like hollering at it. Man. So that happens in Alabama. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. Mississippi. Pretty much the same. Mississippi and Alabama pretty much the same. We try to act like we're different, but we're not. <laughs> okay. Anyways, moving on. Russia, our old friends Russia, who Tried to rig the election. Tried to rig the election. <laughs> pretty much helped us win World War II. You know, we never talk about that here in, in the well, United States. Well, then they turned on us. And yeah. We almost blew each other up yes, for a while. Right, so. Yeah. And then we got, we had a lot of, it was a strained relationship <laughs> for a while. But now they're our friends again because, uh, you know, they decide who's going to be our president now. <laughs> uh, so this story comes from Russia. Uh, Robot Boris featured on Russian TV and was apparently able to walk talk and dance but soon after its appearance the journalists began to question the bot's authenticity have trouble saying that word so i had to concentrate gotcha um in a picture published afterwards on social media the neck of a person was clearly visible um, the robot is in fact a two hundred and fifty thousand ruble costume called <laughs> alyosha the robot made by a company called show robots um while the organizers of the Proyotechoria, pretty much, I'm sure I nailed that technology <laughs> forum, um, which was aimed at younger youngsters, had not claimed the robot was real. The TV coverage on Russia 24 suggested it was. So, this robot was on a TV show, and everybody thought it was real. And everyone's like, "Look, you know, glorious yeah. Russia. Right. Yes. Look at yes. robot. Yes. yes, we our robot's better than your robot. <laughs> you know, take that, Jeff Bezos." <laughs> Uh, and that, and so, anyways, Russian website TJ Journal raised concerns about the robot, asking a series of questions. Why did the robot feature no sensors? It's a logical question. You would need that. 
Um, how did Russian scientists get the robot made so quickly with no papers published about it beforehand? So obviously, <laughs> it was made in secret, right? Um, why, why there has been no new, no internet coverage? Uh, why the robot made so many unnecessary movements during its dance? Robots don't waste movements. Apparently, I didn't know that. <laughs> Um, why did it look like a man would fit perfectly inside it? <laughs> I feel like that's a good one. And why offer a pre-recording of its voice rather than do it live? It's a very good. That's a big tip off right there. <laughs> On the website of the firm behind the Alyosha robot costume, the product is described as being able to cre- create an almost complete illusion that you have a real robot. But it's a man inside. So... <laughs> Uh, everybody for a very short period of time before all these fake news journalists got involved, ruined it for Mr. Putin, uh, thought Russia had created the most awesome robot in the world. And now we find out it was, it just, was just a person. Yeah. I wonder, it was just like, Boris. What if, yeah. So what if they pulled the head off and it was Putin inside of it? You know, <laughs> yeah. that'd be so perfect. But, you know, um, I, I just feel like, uh, Russia, we know from during the Cold War and everything, they did a lot of pretending, you know? <laughs> yeah. And apparently they, it's just hard to break that habit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because they were taking, like, old ships, like, were merchant ships and painting them up like battleships mm-hmm. and stuff. So on satellite images, it would look like they had a... A better bigger, Navy than they actually right, had. Yeah. Yeah. But they have a really good Navy, too. I mean, I would say really good, but... From what I've read, their Navy Mm -hmm. at one time was real powerful. I don't know since the breakup of the (laughs) the USSR what it's like. But, you know, I know that they have like an aircraft carrier. They can't get out and get working that they've been working on for a long time. So, Well, that's more aircraft carrier than I personally have. Yeah, I don't have one. Would like to own one. But United States, yeah, we have... uh, Oh, we got a real good Navy. We have way better aircraft carriers. We got a real... Our Navy, like... You know, that our GI Joe aircraft carrier is better than <laughs> right. your real aircraft carrier. Yes, we uh, we have a very powerful navy. You know, there's a brief period a few couple years ago where we had some ships running into each other and stuff. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. It was like, hey guys, let's get this straightened out. Y'all are making us look bad. <laughs> but our navy is like, it's a very good asset for us. We're capable of pretty much laying whoop down on everybody around the globe pretty <laughs> yeah. quickly with our navy. Just so. ask President Trump and he'll tell oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll park them off the coast <laughs> and call you a little fat rocket man or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> In face at Hoboken SantaCon, fourteen oh, wow. arrested. Okay, have you ever heard of SantaCon? Oh yeah, know all about SantaCon. Really? Okay, well, maybe you should have had this story. What's what's SantaCon? SantaCon is basically an all-day drinking event. <laughs> yes, like a bar crawl. I've heard it will. referred to, which okay, maybe a lot of I didn't know what a bar crawl was oh, yeah? until earlier this year. Apparently, a bunch of people get together and they go like yeah, just bar to every yeah. single bar, right? On a street or something, yeah. and I guess they drink at every single one of them. Yes, and now these people dress like Santa, and it's just like an annual tradition. Right and up north, it doesn't really happen. They tried it in Tuscaloosa once, but I don't, I don't know if they still do it. I remember leaving the restaurant one night, and I was like, "There's a bunch of Santa Claus out here." <laughs> you know? Look at all these posers. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like, oh, thank guys, no, <laughs> but uh. But yeah, so each year it's just like a, if you give people an excuse, like I, I said this back way in the very beginning mm-hmm. in the, 
prehistoric earth oddity years <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. when they we did that story on the cheese rolling festival yes you know? yes yes like if you give people an excuse to drink they'll embrace it they'll embrace it and so this is just an all-day drinking event and you get like a bunch of 20 something guys out and give them an excuse to start drinking at 10 a.m so in the if morning. we just had a bunch of alcohol and had like an earth right. oddity fest where yes. we're just going to listen to earth oddity over all and day. over and over yeah. again right people would love it yeah except we're baptist and we can't do it <laughs> Except we're bad, yeah, just right. we can't do it. Yeah, we can't do that. Right. <laughs> but we if gotta, we could. we got to start attending a Methodist church. <laughs> <laughs> we're going nowhere. We're going to get this podcast going. <laughs> anyway. Hey, sorry, guys. i got to resign from the deacon board so we can go to a Methodist church. <laughs> <laughs> well, check out how much fun this is. Okay. 14 people were arrested at Hoboken Santa Con on Saturday, including one man who punched a police sergeant in the face. Wow. The police chief said on Twitter. Chief Ken Ferrante was tweeting real-time updates of the police response to the SantaCon, uh, a bar crawl in which participants dress as Santa Claus. Mm. Two officers were hurt in a fight near Cadillac Cantina, he said. One of the officers was hospitalized with a dislocated thumb. The other was punched in the face. Two men ages 22 and 23 were charged with aggravated assaults on officers, Ferrante said. Two other officers were treated after they were exposed to blood at a brawl at Johnny Rockets. I didn't know Johnny Rockets was a bar. I don't. I don't know. I'm not up on. I thought it was like a hamburger place for like families, kind of. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I really don't know anything about Johnny Rockets. Well, there's a Johnny Rockets in Hoover. Oh yeah. If you ever, ever we don't we don't go to Hoover that often. <laughs> but there I ain't was, got the I ain't got that Hoover money. <laughs> yes. You know. Before we had children, we would go to the Summit, and okay. there was a we never ate there, but there was a Johnny Rockets there. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's four officers needing medical aid, and some wonder why I condemn this day. For Hunt, I tweeted. On Sunday, Ferrante tweeted that a total of 14 people had been arrested during the event. 46 tickets were issued, he said. The other people arrested faced charges including disorderly conduct, possession of marijuana, yeah. driving while intoxicated. Shocker. Yeah. Uh, police. I mean, you would think you would just get the reindeer to take him home in the sleigh, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> police who also issued wait, police also issued summons for public urination. One man was charged with his resisting arrest after leading police on a foot pursuit. So Santa Claus was just running away and cops trying to chase him down. Yeah. I bet that would have been cool to see. Right. About a hundred officers would be mobilized for SantaCon, Ferrante said. Last year seventeen people were arrested and a woman, so I guess they're actually kinda of down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, and then the woman who was arrested allegedly punched a police officer in the face. Wow. So, That's not very jolly. It's not. You know, uh, you know I uh, hope all these fake Santas get cold in their yeah. stocking. Right, yeah, And definitely. a bag of switches. Definitely. I, I would say that the little bit I know about SantaCon, the guy-to-girl ratio is not good at all. You oh, know? really? Yeah, like if you're a single guy and you're thinking you're going to pick up your you know, cute little Christmas elf or whatever – Probably not going to happen. It's a big saucer fest. You <laughs> no, know? no sexy Miss yeah. Clauses there. Very few, very few. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. And those are the ones you know that are comfortable being around a bunch of dudes, and they're probably not the ones you want. I'll just say that much. <laughs> yeah. You know, not to cast aspersions on females, you know, who like have more guy friends than girlfriends, but there's a lot of sayings about that that I <laughs> will not get into on the air. <laughs> Um, stop, stop claws shaming, John. Yeah, I, yeah I'm sorry. I want, like, like, imagine at some point if we actually were to get famous, you know, like I got that's, doubt. That's funny right there. I know. That's a bit, a lot of people listen to this just laugh. Yeah. But like, uh, you know, like, cause like Kevin Hart's had all this trouble. He was going to host the Oscars and they went back and found some jokes that were like a yes. poor taste or whatever. Yeah. Imagine like. If like for some reason we hit it big and it's like hosting the Oscars this year, John and Tiny from Earth Oddity, and then somebody goes back and listens to these episodes, there's probably so much they could pull out and just like snip, take a snip of it, and it would just be like these guys are horrible people. I, I feel more you than me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. But me. I would love. I would be the one that has to like give I a speech about how I'm sorry. I would be happy to stand up and say. We are so sorry for claws shaming. We have grown and yes. changed and evolved yes. since then. That's right. Yes. And we think 
uh, Mrs. Clauses can be with whoever that, they want to yes, be. Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, like at some point that's going to come back. I should probably just keep my mouth shut more. Like stick no. straight to the material. Because, uh, yeah, like I've already can't run for office, so I'm not worried about hurting any of those chances. But, uh, but yeah, I just, I just think about that. Like, yeah, if they, they just come back and like, first of all, they're going to be like, well, you're heterosexual Christian man. That's, and your wife. That's three strikes. Oh, yeah, and we're white. So <laughs> yeah, that's, in case anybody out. didn't know you're out, out. <laughs> Yeah. So that's four strikes right there. Like, you pretty much got to live a perfect life after that. <laughs> and uh, and watch your words, and, and I haven't. So I just want to apologize to <laughs> everyone out there in advance for anything I've said. I love everyone. I really do. I mean, I hate people, but I love individuals, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. So. Just go ahead and, and let say me that. just say to anyone out there who's wondering, uh, we are not the authority. Oh, on, absolutely not <laughs> so, on anything. So who cares what we say? Right. We yes. say all kinds of stupid stuff. I know more. I, I would say I, I know more about sandwiches than anyone who's listening to this podcast. <laughs> yes. And I would also say with 100% certainty, I've cut more avocados than anyone that listens to this podcast. But other than that. I feel like y'all got me on every other subject there is, <laughs> yes. you know. But if you come stepping to me with some avocado knowledge, I'm going to shoot it down because I know way more than you. All right? I don't care, millennials. I, I know way more about avocados than you do. And once again, to those people out there who may be judging us right now, that's yeah. that's yeah, perfectly fine. Yeah, Really? Have, should, yeah. have at it. Yeah. Because, again, nobody listens to this show because we are intelligent. <laughs> no. We hope people yeah. listen to this show because we're entertaining. And good looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. They listen to the podcast because right. we're good looking. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. So I, I just preemptive apology for all that for when we do get famous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like, just want to go ahead and apologize. <laughs> yeah. So I can snip this out and be like, from the same episode, I went ahead and apologized. <laughs> you know, like you guys didn't listen to everything about You didn't have to wait 10 years to yeah. get an apology. Right. Yeah. Was I was already, I'm already apologized. I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> Look, I, you know, if I've hurt your feelings, I'm sorry, yeah. you know, to anyone out there. Because you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's mm-hmm. all just jokes to me, you know. And don't listen to us. I don't take us. anything seriously. I would just say listen, listen to us, but yeah. don't give us any credence. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't put us on any sort of pedestal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you hate us and you're listening to us because you hate us, then that's fine. I welcome that, and I wish you would find more friends to subscribe and download uh, who hate us as well. Another like, what if we just had people who like just hated us and listened to it? That'd be even better. Well, another reason I feel like you should not put me on a pedestal is because I don't know if you can find a pedestal that's stout enough. You need a big to pedestal. Hold my weight. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> jokes on you. Jokes on you. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna get some granite and <laughs> sort of granite marble hybrid. <laughs> Okay. What we right. got? Well, I got a story about sex robots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. We're, we're getting into some of that gray slow. territory. Yeah. So <laughs> kids go outside. <laughs> the next sentence I'm going to say is going to sound even better compared to the one I just said, which is it's not really about sex robots. It's really about Steve Bannon. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Makes perfect <laughs> sense, right? Yes. Because when I think sex robots, I think Steve Bannon. Right. Well, I mean, I'm not going to kink shame you. Okay. <laughs> That's wrong. When we get famous, that'd be one thing I would get in trouble for. All right. An academic conference. (laughs) (laughs) That we have been thinking about since we were 13. (laughs) Since whenever we watch Weird Science. (laughs) An academic conference on sex robots has been canceled due to a backlash against a proposed speech by Steve Bannon. Donald Trump's former advisor. <laughs> Welcome to 2018, people. I'm just, I mean, I just want to say, uh, I, I was, <laughs> this is going to sound weird. I was reading an article about sex robots. Like, uh, apparently. <laughs> I, I've read those same articles, okay. John. <laughs> I, I read the magazine for the articles, guys. <laughs> But, uh, like, in the comments on the article, people were like, oh, I can't wait, you know, until sex robots are here and all that. And <laughs> yeah. I don't have to fool with women or whatever. <laughs> and I was just like, I didn't comment this because, you know, I just wasn't worth it. But I was just like, you know, 
women are probably like the same way, you know, like when Ricky Robot over here with his six pack abs and yeah. all that, who doesn't leave his clothes laying all over. And the always house. takes out the trash. Always <laughs> takes out the trash. <laughs> always tells her she's beautiful and like you know whatever. Even when she don't have makeup on. Or- yeah, right. But they were all like, "Oh yeah, women's got they got it coming to them now." And I was just like, "You guys are wrong." Like, <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but uh they can get a robot too. So, anyways, you know, I've been listening to a, a podcast called "The End of the World" with Josh Clark. Have you heard of I it? I haven't. Sorry, it's a I want to say it's a, it's a ten part where he talks about uh, what he calls existential risk. These are risks that could end humanity. It okay. could be. You know, a meteorite, it could be disease, it could be AI. Yeah. <laughs> Just anything that has the potential to wipe mankind out. Like sex robots. What about sex robots? Yeah. Because if we have enough sex robots, yeah. we may not have enough babies getting I mean, born. In developing countries, the birth rates have been declining for years. So yeah. I'm just saying, you guys will better huma- watch out. <laughs> will humanity be able to survive the coming <laughs> sex robot apocalypse? I don't know. Anyway, back to Mr. Bannon. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. Bannon had been due to speak at the International Conference on Advances in Computer Entertainment, or ACE, as it's called. Ah. Um, this month in Montana, I wouldn't have pegged Montana as the, <laughs> as the place where the sex robot convention was oh, going I on. Would. I've seen Brobeck Mountain. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I actually read the book, Larry McMurtry, really great author, by the way. Uh, but protests from activists and fellow speakers forced the cancellation of the event, the organizer said. A linked conference being held alongside ACE, the International Congress on Love and Sex with Robots. There's an international congress for that. Oh, yeah. Was canceled over the outcry, uh, a statement has on this website said. Since the arrangements being made for both conferences were inextricably intertwined, intertwined we have <laughs> no alternative but to postpone the Congress on Love and Sex with Robots. Organizer David Levy wrote, guarantee you David Levy's a weirdo. Um, this sex robot gathering has been postponed until January 2020 when it will be held in Las Vegas. This seems like a much more appropriate place. <laughs> At the same time as the pornography convention, he added. Didn't even know there was a pornography convention. <laughs> well, that's to learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah. All right. I didn't know that either. I didn't know it was called the AVN. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I didn't even know they had a convention for that. <laughs> well, SHOT Show, it's always around the same time as SHOT Show. Oh, if you're familiar with SHOT Show. I don't even know show. what SHOT Show is. That shot sounds show. dirty. <laughs> <laughs> SHOT Show is the the gun. It's not a convention. It's like a trade show for everyone in the firearms industry. Oh, okay. Smith & Wesson, well, not so much Colt anymore, yeah. but... Uh, you know, Springfield Armory, Remington, Remington. Yeah. They all get together. And then also all these other people and other, you know, like other countries send people over here to place orders for their military. Sure. All kinds of stuff. Right. You know, huh. I didn't know that. It's held right around the same time as the AVN awards. Sounds logical. I mean, you get like a bunch of dudes in town and let's just have a porn award thing or whatever. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bannon, a former editor of the right-wing Breitbart News website who served as White House chief strategist from January to August last year, was one of the key architects behind Mr. Trump's 2016 alleged election agenda. He had been due uh, to deliver the keynote address at ACE. ACE organizers blamed what they call an anti-free speech fascist-style mob and claimed the behavior of people opposed to Mr. Bannon's presence was very similar to campaigns of book burning in Nazi Germany. Yikes. (laughs) We've got to the point in America where uh, everything that I don't like about the other person, we just somehow link it to Nazis. In doing that, I feel like we've kind of watered down the yeah. evil of the Nazis. Right. I agree. You know? I agree. I agree. So people like hold up signs going, we don't want this guy to talk at your thing. It's not equivalent to anything that went on in Nazi Germany. Right. I just have to say that. And when you, know? you compare every single person you don't like to Hitler, it's yeah. going to get to the point where people don't hate Hitler the way they should. Yeah, I agree. I you know? agree. But anyway. Uh, the decision to can't let's not ruin this like delightful story <laughs> yeah. with that. Let's not bog this down with political talk. <laughs> the decision to cancel taken in mid November was a tragic moment in the history of human civilization. Now that's a bit of hyperbole. <laughs> uh, they said in an unsigned rant on the conference website. 
The conference appeared to have been best uh, beset by problems in 2018. It's 15th year. Wow, 15 years. I had no idea. Wow, how how did all these robots been on the market? <laughs> I don't think there's a, there's any yet. I okay. think this is just they're working Developing for they're like, working for this. Like this this works really well on this robot. It's a whole bunch of lonely right. nerds getting together <laughs> saying, "Wouldn't it be great if we had robots?" Do you think one of them was like? <laughs> Guys, I found the robot, and uh, we got together, and it was wonderful. But then when I was getting dressed, it pulled its head off, and it was Putin inside. <laughs> this robot was a kind and tender lover. But anyways, three members of its steering committee had stepped down over charges, uh, changes to its structure, including the decision to co-locate it with LSR. Um, Yoram Chizik. Not to be confused with former <laughs> Auburn head coach Gene Chizik. <laughs> One of those members wrote in an online statement that none of us were consulted or notified about this, nor did we give our consent to it. Um, Ace founder and chairman Adrian Chio personally attacked Mr. Chizik on Twitter over the falling out. Love a good Twitter war, by the yeah. way. Also, I feel like they said that they didn't consent to it. I feel like consent would really mean a lot to people who were... <laughs> trying to put together yeah, sex robots. Get a robot, <laughs> yes. I just program you to never say no. Uh, Mr. Bannon's planned presence at other conventions and festivals has sparked backlash previously. Um, the New Yorker magazine was forced to disinvite Mr. Bannon after complaints from other headline guests at its 2018 festival. <laughs> So there you have it, Mr. Bannon. <laughs> this sex robot convention. Let's keep this pure. Yeah, right. I don't want Mr. Right. Bannon dirtying up yeah. my sex robot convention. Hey, where have we gone as a humanity, guys, <laughs> when we can't have a peaceful <laughs> sex robot convention without someone like Steve Bannon giving uh, our giving a speech? To, look, okay, I am not defending Steve Bannon. No. But to all his critics out there and, and people who hate him, can't you just take the win? Yeah. I mean, he's speaking at the sex robot convention. Well, okay, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> we discussed this. Right, let's not act like being the <laughs> keynote speaker of the sex robot convention is a bad thing, okay? Like, you, can you imagine the benefits of that? I don't know what they are. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I want to imagine That's the benefits a good of point. that. That's good. He seems, I mean, just based on looks alone, he seems like a prime candidate <laughs> yeah. for a sex robot, you know? But you he think- has money, so he could probably get an attractive girl. Do you think they... uh do you think they hang a big giant banner that says "Do the robot"? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I tell you what, it's got to be some winners there. I would like to go just to like take pictures of people, and, and I would like to look at pictures on Instagram, but not actually go. <laughs> what if we broadcast like Earth Oddity live from the Sex Robot Convention next year in Las Vegas? Well, where we're at, I feel like anything would be a step up. Yeah, so yeah. Maybe we'd trip on over to the porn convention and hand out some chick tracks. You know? <laughs> oh, I, mean, I was saying, oh, uh, let's mercy. make this a win-win. We could go by the whatever the other one was, the shop one. Shot show. Buy a couple of guns, you know? <laughs> yeah. This would make a whole weekend out of it. I feel uh, like we could get some good content. I tell you what, that sounds like a fun weekend. It, really it also does. sounds like one I would never forget, <laughs> no. but I would try to for the rest for every day for the rest of my life. Can you imagine the conversation with Tara or me with Deidre going, "Hey, uh, you're going to do look, what? We're go- first look. This is big news. This is going to be big for the podcast. We're going to the sex robot convention. All right." <laughs> Then the next day, we're going to hit up the porn convention, all right? And then we're going to round it all out by going to the gun convention. I love you, baby. I'll be back. I already got my bags packed. We're just going to head on out there, you know? I don't think that'll go. I feel like Tara would be like, okay, I could tolerate that third one. Yeah. (laughs) But why did you lead off with the first one? (laughs) Why did you put those other two in front of it? Well, you want to leave the one that's most pleasing to the ear as the last. You know, like that's the one they'll remember the most. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I can't see Deidre getting on board with that either. She might be okay with like robot, like sex robots. If I was just like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not going to buy a sex robot. Those things are millions of dollars or whatever. <laughs> I can't afford yeah. one. I can't afford a sex robot. <laughs> you think we are? We don't even go to Hoover. You know? But uh, 
But yeah, the porn one and the gum one, she probably wouldn't be cool with either. Because she's like, you know. would be like, okay, look, here, I'm going to get a sex robe. Hear me out on this. Yeah, look, it's also going to take out the trash and wash the dishes. Well, <laughs> I did bring up one time, like, hey, Deidre, uh, I can get a mail order bride. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, let, let me just get a mail order bride. I'll, you know, we'll, we'll just marry on paper or whatever. And then she'll just be here to help us out around the house, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then Deidre, like, mentioned, like, that's pretty close to slavery. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's a good point. Probably, probably shouldn't do that. You know, I was just thinking, like, an easy way here. We just get us a lady. We're like, she's like, international cooking skills and stuff. She'd be happy to be in America. We're helping someone else out here. <laughs> But yeah, and I would probably have to become a Mormon, so. <laughs> oh, man. No offense to my Mormon friends. I want to apologize for that. They're a very big group. You know what? I feel like we really should have ended with that story. Yeah, that would <laughs> been a good one. But I thought yours was a little adult, too. I was about to say, since, we're in, since we've gone this far, yeah. like we said last week, let's just go a little let's bit further. Let's keep going. <laughs> let's get on the bleeding edge. Former teacher admits to biting a student's butt while oh. in a pool. Okay. As George Costanza would say, is that wrong? Was I not supposed to do that? Uh, a former middle school teacher has pleaded guilty to biting a 14-year-old girl's butt as wow. the teen played water volleyball during a 4th of July celebration in Georgia. Okay. Just bit her on the butt. Yeah, this... <laughs> I have a feeling like this really is pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, I but that's <laughs> on several different levels. I mean, bad. was it a male or female teacher? Uh, it was a male. Oh, so yes. So, because there's been a lot of news stories about female teachers, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. There's like a rash of female teachers who are, and I feel not like doing the right thing. And I feel like American culture is kind of okay with that. But in not a way, for the yeah. other, yeah. Like if you reverse the genders, yeah, it's right. like the most evil, heinous thing ever. Yeah, right. But, but I mean, it's still it's the same thing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Anyway, Jonathan yeah. <laughs> William Herbert, thirty years old, will serve. And okay, I think this is the real crime here: thirty days in jail and 30. four years probation under a plea deal reached on Friday. Thirty days? That's nothing. That ain't nothing for biting a fourteen-year-old girl's butt. I, leave. I know you got to you got to go for yeah. at least a couple years, in my a, opinion. I know a guy's been in jail in fat since September, you know, and he was just like <laughs> drunk. So, all right. <laughs> Herbert allegedly did nothing to hide his actions. Multiple oh. witnesses saw the drunken educator swim underneath and bite the girl while in a lake north of Atlanta, Authority said. The man then tried to bribe a cop with $200 after he was caught. You got to go higher than 200 <laughs> You know? Yeah. I mean, that's a rookie. Those are rookie numbers. He, uh, he didn't have any connection to the girl or her family. He okay. resigned from his teaching job on August 1st. I feel like he should have been fired. Yeah. Like, Honestly, why did you even give him the option? You should have just been like, you are fired, dude. Not that this makes it any better, but I thought it was like a school. Like, hey, we're all out here. You know, we got the middle school class. We're having fun. And now this teacher's drunk and biting students on the butt. But, I mean, he's still biting 14-year-old people on the butt, but it wasn't like one of his students. And why is he drunk? Why is he hanging around 14-year-old kids? Fourth of July. That's what you do, buddy. <laughs> it's just, it's but you can't have, what children. Better way you to can't have children at those events. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that, you know, getting drunk and kids should mix together too much, but I wouldn't say it's that uncommon for people mm -hmm. to be drinking and, and have kids around. Well, anyway, his battery, public drunkenness, and bribery charges will be wiped from his record if he completes his sentence without any problems. Oh, wow. Herbert is barred from teaching and can't be seen in areas where children congregate, according to court records. Uh, so That's good. <laughs> but, hey, I leave, man. Like... Everybody that name, Jonathan William Herbert. Yeah, remember if he's coming to your school district. <laughs> yes. You know, like if your kid comes home and goes, I got Mr. Herbert for history this year, you need to do some investigating. I just, if he ever does teach again, I hope he walks in the door and some kid is playing the Jaws theme <laughs> on <laughs> oh, his phone, no. you know. Oh, yeah, I'd call him Mr. Butt Biter for this whole time. <laughs> hey, Mr. Butt Biter, what do we got to do for homework today? <laughs> You know, Mr. Butt Biter, we got a pop quiz today. I would just say it until he like wanted to fight me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would never let him live it down. <laughs> I just thought, man, like, you know, I mean, I, 
we're, we're men and women can look attractive. I mean, there's been times I've wanted to snack on my wife, you know, or whatever, <laughs> but not like a kid in a lake in Georgia or whatever. And then like bite them on the butt. Like what a weird thing to do. Yes. I'm not kink shame. <laughs> Am I kink shame? I don't want to kink shame. You just shouldn't. I feel like you shouldn't bite people. Yeah. But if you are going to bite somebody, they then, should give you consent. They should give you consent. Absolutely. It should not be an underage uh Definitely not child. underage. It should be yeah. a 14-year-old child, No, yeah, in my yeah. opinion. You, you, all right, let's lay out the biting rules. It can only be an adult <laughs> who gives you consent. Yes. All right, because some people might some people like are, a little Well, bite. some people are into vampire stuff. Yeah, true. You know? Right? That's right. Need to watch a lot of, like, True Blood and Vampire Diaries and all that. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I get a little nibble in there every once in a while. <laughs> Oh, gracious. Okay, so now that I've, you know, definitely hope my wife never listens again, uh, let me talk about our friends over at Cajun Curl. Uh, We want to thank them for all they do for us. Uh, You can get their world-famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice right on their website, which is CajunCurl.com. Um, you can also order not only the spice, but the Cajun Curl chip cutter for potatoes there as well. Um, it was created on the Jolly Old Elm Bayou. The Holly Jolly Elm Bayou. Yeah, in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana. It's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes with Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well with chicken, beef. <laughs> pork, potatoes, fruit cake, eggnog, and anything else you can think of putting it on. Leave some out for Santa Claus. That's right. The spiral potato cutter is absolutely amazing. It's easy to use, easy to clean, and will allow you to make your own chips using the Cajun Curl Spice. If you want to turn your Christmas event up a notch, imagine whipping up a batch of homemade potato chips. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your your Aunt Martha is not even going to be able to top that. You think her fruitcake is going to be better than that? Well, it is not. And let me tell you, the homemade chips with the Cajun Curl Spice on them are absolutely mind-blowing. It'll change your life. Um, on the website, CajunCurl.com, you can not only order the original Bayou Blended Spice, but the Ch- Cajun Curl Chip Cutter as well. And you'll also find recipes there that are mind-blowing. You can locate your nearest retailer or order your own. If your local grocer, does, grocer doesn't carry world-famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice, ask them to start stocking it. Here locally in Tuscaloosa, it's available at Vowels on Skyland Boulevard, South's Finest Meats, and Piggly Wiggly here in Northport. All of their products are made in the USA, so not only do you enjoy the taste of Cajun Curl, but you also feel like George Washington and American Flag Speedo while you enjoy your meal. (laughs) It's all natural, low salt, and it has a little kick to it, but it doesn't burn your lips. World famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice. Taste the spice, but not the heat. Uh, Check them out on CajunCurl.com and use the promo code EOP10. Because we ask that you use the spice, but we don't ask you to pay full price. That's right. You'll get a 10% discount. So check out our friends over at Cajun Curl. Order your spice. Get it going. Makes a great stocking stuffer. Don't know if they can get it to you by Christmas, but who cares? If it comes after Christmas, just put it in a sock and hand it to your loved one. So they get the same type of feel. Yeah. Use EOP10. All right. We got any reviews or rants or anything else? Um, checking right now. We don't have any new iTunes reviews. No. By the way, I don't want you to edit out your dad's call out of that <laughs> ad read. I think it'd be perfect to leave it in there. <laughs> anything? Any holiday stuff or anything to talk about? <laughs> um, no. Other than Deidre got some sort of little like uh, elf thing. It's not an elf on the shelf. Wait a minute. This is all her doing, and I'm not a part of it. (laughs) It's like this little elf, and it has a nativity scene with it. And each night, it brings a new piece to the nativity scene. So it starts like, you know, how many ever days before Christmas. Right. on Christmas, you know, when you wake up Christmas morning, there's the elf of the little baby Jesus that goes into the manger or whatever, into the nativity. And there's a little poem every day. Mm-hmm. So Deidre's doing all of that. I'm not doing it. I was anti-elf, even though it's like a Jesus elf or whatever, but <laughs> I'm anti-elf. 
But that's what Deidre's done, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, or that's what Deidre's doing. Livy thinks it's great, also thinks it's magical, and wants to know why it doesn't move around and get in messes at night like a regular elf on the shelf right. does. So, yeah. I've always been anti-elf on the shelf until That's, I heard you ranting about it that one episode, and that yeah. actually kind of made me want to go do it, the exact opposite <laughs> of what you said. <laughs> but you know what? Elf on the shelf, that's hard to find, dude. Oh, yeah. Where you do you what? get them? I don't, I guess Amazon, where well, we get everything else. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you want an Amazon elf on the shelf, it's like 50 or 60 bucks. Oh, for I think they're kind of pricey. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I, I went to Facebook Marketplace. Good idea. <laughs> it used to be yard sale. Yes. But I still couldn't find any elf on the shelves. So well, one of my favorite pastimes on Facebook Marketplace is uh, looking at mirrors and seeing how people have taken the pictures to try to keep themselves out of the picture. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it'll just be like uh, somebody's like the hand arm. Yeah, with, with a that. phone in it. It's pretty funny. I'll enjoy <laughs> that. that. Is kind of funny. I also like to see weird stuff people put up. Somebody put a beat up couch up. I mean, it was like torn up for like three hundred dollars. <laughs> <And almost, then, laughs> all kind of comments on it. People are like, "Oh, girl, you crazy!" and all that. It's so funny. I almost listed your kidney for sale, but that would have been a good idea. I well, I didn't want to get put in Facebook jail. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a friend that went to Facebook jail. <laughs> yeah, Josh. I don't know what he did though. You know, I don't know. Do either. you know who I'm talking about? To my uh, well, I don't want to say his last name. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, he he makes a lot of posts. Oh, he's, he's a lot of posts. Some <laughs> he, of them are like rub you the wrong way. He uh, yeah, you know, he likes to he, he likes stirs to, a pot. He likes to abuse community standards from time <laughs> to time. Sometimes he does. And when you abuse when community standards, that'll happen. You get thrown in Facebook. Yeah, you little time out. <laughs> but I love him. I love him. I love his brother. They're all good people. And I like really it when awesome. he and his brother argue. Uh, yes. Because so they're all opposite sides of the political <laughs> spectrum. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it's funny. And, I'm and a, now I feel like at this point in American politics is the best time to have family members or close friends right. on either side of the spectrum yes. <laughs> because they have never been as bloodthirsty <laughs> and as vicious towards one right. another yeah. as they are now. Yes. And, you know, like his brother is my age, and I think Josh is probably closer to your age. so mm-hmm. Which uh, is only a, a few years. Yeah, right. Not that far apart. We're yeah. not that far apart. But uh, So I, I kind of hung out with his brother more than Josh. He was younger growing up. Right. But, uh but it's it's fun. I, I like both of them, and they're good people. I mm-hmm. mean, I I would trust them with my life, either one of them. Uh, but yes, he does push the envelope a few times. <laughs> I wonder who like reported him though. You know, well, it I wasn't got, me. I had Facebook take down a post of mine one time mm-hmm. because uh, it was about Donald Trump, and I just said it kind of jokingly, but not. But mm-hmm. back when all of uh. You know, he made his comments about grabbing or whatever, and mm-hmm. I was just like, "Hey, you know, like if he was to say that about my daughter, I would punch him in the face." You know, like I don't, I don't you're, care. I mean, you're really. I was about to say, what dad wouldn't? Yeah, really. Right. Yeah, and uh, and it got taken down for like promoting violence or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, well, which one of you goobers reported this? You know, like it's well, just a I will joke. say, I will say this. I find it surprising that Facebook would take down a post about punching President Trump. <laughs> He you wasn't know? the president then, but still, I imagine someone who was like really on the Trump train, you know, yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm driving the locomotive for Donald Trump down here. He's like, you should, yeah. you'd be honored right. if, if you were to see your daughter. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, you would be honored. <laughs> you you shouldn't be so lucky as to have the president grab your daughter. Yeah, so how re- dare you? Reported me in Facebook, <laughs> you know, or probably read it and was like, well, he does say you would punch somebody in the face, and we have an anti-violence clause, so let's take it. Down. Throw him in the tank yeah. to Facebook jail with you. Yeah, yeah. But they didn't suspend my account. They just took my post out. Right. Because I had that memory the other day because I screenshotted mm-hmm. like the notification from him and like put it up and it came up on my memories, you know, not long ago. And I was like, I should share that again just to see if it makes <laughs> that whoever did it, you know, mad or whatever. Well, let's well, see here. Hey, everybody give us a review. Let's leave us some reviews, guys. If or send give us an Earth email. Oddity, give us something yeah, to talk about. Call us. You yeah. Know? If you want to give Earth Oddity a Christmas present, leave us a review. Call us. Email us. I mean, tell us what you want for Christmas. Yeah. We will read your Christmas list on air. I'll make that commitment right now. And we might even, if you send in your Christmas list, make your Christmas wishes to John and Tiny. Right. We might pick one lucky winner. Yes. To make your Christmas dreams come true. Okay. I'll tell you this. <laughs> if we get 
let's go. Uh, if we get one thousand reviews by Christmas Day, <laughs> I will buy a sex robot. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's a reasonable goal. You heard it, people. I will buy a sex robot. <laughs> we'll probably give it away because I won't be able to keep it. You know, I got like a teenage boy. You can't have a sex robot <laughs> with a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> we'll give it away. <laughs> that's a recipe for disaster. That's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll, we'll give it away live on the air one day uh, to someone. So Wow. Thousand reviews. That's all I'm asking for. Okay. Hey, people. <laughs> right. You heard it. You heard him. Right. <laughs> so, let's get it. Let's make that happen. All right. So far, I haven't gotten a dragon tattoo. You know, that never happened. Nope. I have a good feeling this will never. I will not be purchasing a sex robot. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, because yeah. it was a thousand likes. If we can't get yeah. a thousand likes, people I know gonna, there's right. no way we're getting a thousand reviews. I'd just like to point out, too, that I did not specify if it would be a male or female sex robot. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Just one thing, you know, some of you might get something you don't want or maybe didn't even know you wanted. Just saying. Oh man. Okay, I'm uh, I'm calling it. <laughs> you have been listening to Earth Oddity Podcast, and we thank you so much for listening to us no matter where you get us, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podcast Republic, Acast, Tune In, Spotify. We're on them all. Uh, we're on it all. And if you would like to write into the show. We are Earth Oddity at planetmail.net. Come on, people, send in your Christmas wishes. That's right. <laughs> and leave us reviews. Leave us reviews. If you would like to tweet at us, yeah. our Twitter handle is at underscore Earth Oddity. That's right. We have uh, Instagram, That's right. underscore Earth Oddity. Didn't get a picture up this week, but you never know. You got to follow so you know when I get a picture up. Follow Renegade of Rock. Sometimes, oh, yeah. some, that's mine. Sometimes I'll you throw them up, too. You can find my personal one, too. It's JG Long. If you want to follow me personally and see right. what kind of weird stuff me and my family get into. <laughs> and, and my mirror selfie like series I have going on. And we have a phone number, too. What's that phone number? It's 205-662-493-2059. That's 662-493-2059. Call now. Sec robot operators are standing by. <laughs> yes. We hope everybody out there has a great week. Yep. Earth Oddity for the Fringe Radio Network signing off. Love y'all. Bye. This has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.